Okay, greetings, you rascally little chemistry students. Uh, Mr. Hudeberg here, and we're going to focus in on rounding our numbers. So when we get a numerical value that's based on measurements, we need to round in science. We're going to talk about how and why here. All right, so first of all, let's say on your calculator, you run a calculation, and that calculation spits out a big, long friggin' number like that one. All right. One of the things you're going to ask me is, what should I round that to? Do I need to write all of those numbers? Should I write all those numbers? Is it appropriate for me to do that? And if not, where do I round? And how do I decide what that number ought to look like when I write my answer on paper? All right. So um, basically, the way we round numbers in science is based on the precision of the instruments that we're using. So I'm going to give you an example. So let's say Mr. Huderberg, with his love handle, steps on a scale, right, or balance, and it tells me that I weigh 185 pounds, all right? So I'm not real happy about that 185, so in my depression, I decided to step off that scale and I eat a candy bar just to spite that scale, all right? Now, then I feel guilty. I'm like, oh, shoot, I shouldn't have eat that candy bar, but I step back on the scale, and I still weigh 185 pounds. Can you believe that luck? So does this mean that I can just eat all the candy bars I want without gaining weight? Or does it more likely mean that the scale is not precise enough to display the small change in weight? So in reality, in science, right, we have conservation of matter. So when I ate that candy bar, whatever that candy bar weighed added to the weight that I already had. OK? Um, so in reality, we're probably somewhere down here. It means that that scale right, was not precise enough or sensitive enough to detect that small change in my mass. All right. Now, instruments that we use in science are limited in their precision. Right. So this is a pretty darn fancy uh, balance right here. This goes all the way down to the one, two, three. So one one thousandth of a gram. Okay, that's a pretty darn sensitive balance. Now that balance, if I was standing on it, right, would certainly detect that candy bar. And in fact, it would probably detect it here, here, and here, maybe even at that point right there, if it was the measuring in grams. Okay, so one of the things I'm getting at here is when we report answers or measurements, we need to account for how precise the instrument is. So the balance I was on back here, right, really only told me to the nearest whole pound. This balance goes near all the way down to the one one thousandth of a gram. So this is a much more precise instrument. So the numbers I report in my data can be a lot more precise. So we're going to give an example of how rounding comes into play. So let's say, for example, Lily. Right, real fast runner, Lily here. She runs 100 meters in 8.7 seconds. Now, aside from shattering any world record, right, that aside, let's say we want to know what her average velocity is. So, simple enough, we're going to go 100 meters divided by 8.7 seconds, and that tells us her average velocity is 11.49425287 meters per second. And we know that because I just put 100 divided by 8.7 on my calculator, and that's the number it told me, right? Now, what if I told you that in chemistry and physics, right, you can't report that number as 11.49425287. You have to round that to 10 meters per second. You might be wondering, well, why, right? Well, at 10 meters per second, it looks nothing like 11.49425287 meters per second. Why do we do that? Well, I'm going to tell you, it has something to do with that number. And we'll talk about what's wrong with that number or imprecise about that number in just a second. Now, let's say Lily runs that 100 meters. But rather than reporting it as a simple 100 meters, I report it as 100.0 meters. Right? And I even, so that's a more precise measurement because I'm going all the way down to the nearest tenth of a meter in this case. And we record our time as 8.70 seconds. Now, according to the same rules in the same class, same speed, same distance, but we're reflecting more precision in our, in our measurement, 
we can report that one as 11.5 meters per second, right? Probably a more accurate and a more precise way to report that data. And all it came down to was adding a decimal place and a zero in these numbers. 100 is essentially the same as 100.0, but by putting that 0 0.0 there to 100 meters, I'm telling the chemist or physicist that I actually measured that 100 meters pretty precisely, right? Whereas only writing it as 100 meters, right? I just know that it's about 100 meters or approximately. And so my answer here is going to be an approximation, right? Here, I can give a much more precise answer because I measured more precisely originally. All right. Now, we have what are called significant figures. So how do you know what to round to? That's what we're getting at. Then it all comes down to what are called significant figures. And there's some rules. We're just going to talk about these rules real quick. So if it's not a zero, it's always significant. So again, basically the same heat meters, 100 meters, 8.7 seconds, 100.0 meters, 8.70 seconds, right? Well, in both of those cases, the one, the eight, and the seven, we automatically know those are significant, right? So we need to count those when we ta start talking about what we're gonna round to. So non-zero numbers, always significant. Now, zeros between non-zero digits are also always significant. So let's say, for example, uh, rather than 100, right? I report 101. Now that changes things. We know the ones are significant, but it's, it's because the zero is between non-zero digits, that's also significant. So that would be three sig figs. Okay. Now, ending zeros, so we have zeros at the end of a number, they're only significant if there is a decimal. And that comes into comparing 100 versus 100.0. Right? So in the number just writing 100, right, those zeros are not significant because there's no decimal. So in just the number 100, that would be one sig fig, that one that, number that's not a zero. Now, when I write it as 100.0, what I did by adding that point zero is I said that I measured that 100 pretty precisely. So now, that has four sig figs. That means four digits that I actually measured to. Okay? So non-zero numbers, always significant. Zeros between non-zeros, always significant. Ending zeros, sometimes significant. And the sometimes is if there is a decimal. And the last rule is leading zeros are never significant. And when do we see leading zeros? We see those when right? We have a decimal, right? So 0 0.00034. Leading zeros, never significant. So that would have two sig figs, right? The three and the four. Now, just an FYI, the same rules apply to scientific notation, right? So if I said 3.7 times 10 to the 23rd, right? That would be two sig figs, right? 3.70 times 10 to the 23rd would be three sig figs, right? Because there is a decimal, that zero is significant, all right? What we don't do is worry about all those extra zeros that come with that exponent. We only worry about the numbers that come here right, for sig figs. All right, that being said, how many sig figs are in the following numbers? We're gonna keep these rules right here. We're gonna quickly walk through what that looks like. So the number 300, so we have the three, that's automatically one. Are those two zeros significant? They're ending zeros and no decimal. So there's one sig fig there. Now, if I measure 300 to 300.00, because we have ending zeros and they're is a decimal, we all of a sudden have one, two, three, four, five sig figs, including that three. 
leading zero is not significant, so we just have the one and the two, so that makes two sig figs, right? Leading zero is not significant. The one and the four are. This is an ending zero with the decimal, so that would make three sig figs. 101, the ones are both are, so that makes one and two. The zero is as well because it's between, so that makes three sig figs. 101,000, right, uh, is, uh, how would we look at that? We have the one and the one, so there's two. That zero is significant because it's between. These zeros are not because they're ending. And there's no decimal. So that would be three. All right. That concludes how far we're going to take Sig Big for today. Uh, we will talk about what this looks like with calculations very soon.